Haiku. Please enjoy Japanese traditional poetry of haiku. First, do you know what haiku is? Thank you. <laughs> haiku is the shortest poetry in the world. Haiku consists of 17 syllables. Five, seven, five syllables. In our presentation, first, Misako will introduce haiku history. Next, I will present how to write haiku. And lastly, Mika will introduce haiku today. In this presentation, our goals are to teach to you history of haiku, to introduce to you basic haiku writing, and also to explain to you how haiku is related to Japanese daily life. First, Misako will introduce history of haiku. Please enjoy our presentation. Thank you, Mika. I'm Misako. Today, I will introduce the fabulous history of haiku and its growing popularity in today's, today's world. In my presentation, I will talk about two points. First, I will introduce the history of haiku. Then finally, I will introduce modern haiku. First of all, I will talk about the history of haiku. Benga was a kind of ancient Japanese poetry which exists before haiku. Benga was for highly ranked people's literature around the 10th century. Benga, benga was used as an entertainment. First, the, at first, the, in Benga, first person at write a three lines of the poem in five, seven, five syllables. Then, next person adds the two lines which each have seven syllables. Then, next person adds the three lines of the poem in five, seven, five syllables. As you can see, people continue to write the poem and when they finish writing it, they share the poem and guess what the first person wants to describe. Benga was a kind of chain game among the highly ranked people. Benga was divided into tanka and haiku. Tanka consists of 31 syllables. Five, seven, five, seven, seven syllables. As you know, Haiku consists of 17 syllables. Why was, tan why was Renga divided into Tanka and Haiku? It is because Renga was for highly ranked people's literature. A man wanted to spread this kind of poetry among the ordinary people. So he established the new concept of Haiku. Who was that? That was Basho Matsuo. Next, I will introduce Basho Matsuo, who is a famous haiku writer in Japan. He was born in the central part of Japan in 1644. His parents were farmers, so he helped his parents when he was a child. When Basho, when Basho was 18 years old, he wanted to be a cook. So he worked for a lord in his area, Yoshitada Todo, who is also a haiku writer. Yoshitada wrote haiku very well, so he taught Basho how to write haiku. When Basho was 22 years old, Yoshitada died. However, Basho kept, kept writing haiku, and some people started to respect and follow him, and at the point, Basho, Basho was considered to be a haiku master. Basho wrote more than 1,000 haiku poems in his life. 
He died on October 12th in, 90, in, 16, in 1694 at the age of 50. Why is he famous in Japan? It is because, it is because of his books called Saganikki and Oku no Hosomichi. Saganikki is his journal in haiku. Now, I will introduce the book Oku no Hosomichi. Oku no Hosomichi is his travel book. Oku no Hosomichi means the deep narrow lane. When Basho was 46 years old, he traveled around the northern part of Japan with his disciple, Sora Kawai. This book was published by Basho's disciple in 702 after Basho died. How did they travel around the northern part of Japan? They walked 1,500 miles in 150 days. He described the beauty of, beauty of Japanese nature during his travels in his book. Finally, let's move on to modern hike. In the middle of the 19th century, haiku had an amazing revolution by Shiki Masaoka, who is also a famous haiku writer in Japan. He thought haiku should be changed because also he wanted to spread the haiku among the ordinary people. So his group, made, his group established some new rules of haiku. Now, I will introduce, I will talk about three points of the new rules of haiku. First, people should, first, original haiku didn't describe exciting things such as party or festival. So, he thought people should rethink about the themes. Second, People should put not only hiragana and kanji, but also katakana and borrow word. It is because in this period, Japan opened the country and many foreigners came to Japan. And also, Japanese used the borrow word in, the, in their daily life, so he wanted to put a new style of haiku. Finally, people don't need to learn haiku from haiku master or school. It was natural that people who wanted to write haiku had to learn it from haiku master or school. However, some people couldn't go to school because they didn't have enough money. Shiki was afraid that haiku might die or he be forgotten by everyone. So he established those rules that people could write haiku more easily than before. At first, those, at first, citizens couldn't accept those rules, but this movement changed haiku style directly. Now, those rules are still alive today. In my conclusion, Haiku changed many times and affected by the changing society. In the past, haiku, this kind of poetry was for highly ranked people, but now any people can write haiku more easily than before. Now, do you know the better the history of haiku and modern haiku? Do you want to write haiku? <laughs> Next, Reika will introduce how to write haiku. Thank you. Thank you, Misako, for sharing us history of haiku. Next, I will move on the North Wolfy techniques and strategy when writing haiku. The very first time I wrote haiku was when I was in fourth grade. I had an opportunity to learn how to make haiku in Japanese class. 
At that time, all this three, I didn't know any rules of haiku. However, I really enjoy it because for me, it was enjoyable to express my feelings in 17 syllables. So today, I'm going to introduce the four basic techniques and three nose for feet strategies. As I grow older, in the middle school or high school, I learned how to write, high, how to write haiku by following rules. And I found out if I follow the rules, it will be more interesting for me because I can express my feelings more. In haiku, we have four basic techniques. Haiku syllables, kigo, seasonal words, kireji, cutting words, and finally, toriyawase, internal comparison. Let me begin with the haiku syllables. As I interviewed different Americans, I found out they have made haiku when they were in middle school or high school. So they know haiku consists 17 syllables. Haiku has three lines, five, seven, five syllable pattern to follow. Next, I'm going to introduce kigo, seasonal words. Because haiku is a poem about nature or seasons, we should put at least one seasonal word in each haiku. As you can see, there are many examples of seasonal words which related to four seasons. Around this time, it's winter, so we can use icy moon or snow as seasonal words. We can also use the events such as Christmas or New Year's Eve as seasonal words. Sometimes it's hard for us to come up with any good seasonal words, then we use saijiki. It is a dictionary for seasonal words. So when we don't have any idea with the good seasonal words, we can look them up in saijiki. Next, I'm going to introduce kireji, cutting words. Here is an example of the kireji haiku. Furuike ya kawazu tobikomu mizu no oto. This haiku is written by Basho Matsuo. This haiku means the old peaceful pond, the frog jumps in the sound of water. In this haiku, this ya is a kireji, cutting words. However, we don't have these words in English. So instead of using these words, we use comma, period, or colon as a kireji. It helps to separate haiku into two parts. Can you imagine there is an old peaceful poem? The writer Matsuo Basho didn't expect any movement or sound because the place is so calm and quiet. There is a frog nearby the pond and it jumps into the water. And he can hear that it sends out the ripples and sound of splashing. Matsuo Basho was so impressed by the movement of water and the sound of water. That is the reason why Matsuo Basho put the cutting words after the old pond. It expressed the core of the purpose of the writer's motive. Next, I'm going to introduce toriyawase, internal comparison. Here is an example of the toriyawase haiku. Kareda ni karasu no tomari keri, aki no, aki no kure. This haiku is also written by Basho Matsuo. This haiku means on a withered branch, a crow has settled, autumn night fall. In this haiku, two images, of Im two images or impressions are compared. The first two sentences, the image of first two sentences and image of the last sentence are compared. The image of first two sentences is a crow sitting on the bare branch. The image of last sentence is the sun setting during the night time. So by, by comparing with those words, we can produce the taste of haiku. It's okay to describe if either this, uh, this image or that image, 
However, by comparing two images or impressions, we can produce the taste of haiku more, and it moves the readers. So, toriyawase is an important strategy when, when writing haiku. Next, let me move on the three noteworthy strategies of haiku. There are three points to remember when we write haiku. First, when we write haiku, we can't describe the general topic. Because haiku, because if we write about the general topic, it's, for, it's hard for readers to understand what the writer wants to tell. So it's important to write a specific topic. And the second, when we write haiku, we should explain the event that is happening now. Because haiku is a self-expression tool, so we can't describe the past or future. And lastly, the most important thing is when you write haiku, do not to think, but feel it. As I told you, haiku is a self-expression tool, so it's important for us to feel it when we write haiku. In my opinion, literature are easy to disappear if we are not familiar with or accustomed with. However, haiku has a long history, but we still enjoy. That is the reason why we have techniques, and that is because we have techniques and strategies. In the very beginning, haiku didn't have any rules. However, as it spread to the ordinary people, at the same time, we developed those rules. That is the reason we still enjoy haiku. And for me, haiku is a poetic tool for self-expression in the 21st century. However, these rules are going to change recently. So next presenter, Mika, will introduce haiku today. Thank you. Thank you, Reika, for, uh, thank you, Reika, for sharing with us about strategies and techniques of haiku. My name is Mika Muguruma. I'd like to talk about wonderful expression of haiku in Japanese daily life. There is a three, in, in this presentation, there is a three ways that haiku is, haiku is related to Japanese daily life. First, different, feeling when, different feelings people have when writing haiku. And then, shifting haiku topics. Finally, I'd like to talk about one of the biggest haiku competitions in Japan. First of all, let, let's talk about feeling of haiku. Cherry blossom is called sakura in Japanese. When people see, see or write haiku about sakura, some people think sakura is very beautiful or wonderful. But some, some people think sakura has short life, so, so it is a kind of, kind, of, kind of sad feeling. So there is a positive thinking and negative thinking. And I'd, I'd like to share with you two examples, my grandmother's experiences and my own experiences. My grandmother uh, my, my grandmother sometimes go to hike club in Japan, and she is she has been a care worker for elderly people and people with dementia. So she has a lot. She has had a lot of opportunity to write haiku, and I looked I looked back at my own experiences when I was in elementary school. This haiku was written by Noriko who is my grandmother. This haiku means it was, it suddenly begins snowing. People cannot go to work, their workplace or office. This haiku, mean, this haiku means in English, surprising to see the snow, cannot use car or bicycle, cannot go to workplace or office. However, However, the hike riders, hike riders can imagine other situations 
such as working people's families view. The family is worried about their wife or husband. The, the families, some families think the wife or husband cannot go to workplace or office. So we can imagine working people's situation and working people's family's situation. When I was in elementary school, I learned haiku. It was my first time to learn haiku. Um, and I learned traditional rules such as kigo or kireji and so on. However, I, wa I was not interested in haiku. <laughs> haiku. But when I came back to here, I had a lot of, I had the opportunity to write haiku at the Moon Viewing Festival at the MFWI in October. And I wrote Halloween haiku and I, I, I used haiku poetry as a kind of journal. Let's move on to shifting haiku topics. There is a traditional haiku topics and modern topics. Traditional, topic, traditional haiku topics are nature or feelings, which are related to kigo or personal emotion. People still have a traditional haiku topics, but people add more, more modern haiku topics, such as sweets. Next, I will talk about sweets haiku. People use, haiku, people use sweets instead of kigo. Kigo is seasonal words. Leika told you about them already. This, sweet, this haiku use this sweets. This sweets called mitsumame. Almost all Japanese people eat mitsumame at, in summer, so we can understand which season it is. And this haiku was written by Kyoshi Takahama. He was also a famous haiku writer. When he wrote this haiku, he saw two women in a cafe, and two women ordered mitsumame. So when, we, uh, he saw, when he saw the mitsumame and two women, the mitsumame has lively color, and two women uh, uh, were talking very lively. So we can compare the lively, color, lively color and women's actions. There are, there are a lot of hike competitions in Japan. Next, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest hike competitions in Japan. One of them is called Oyocha Haiku, which is supported by Itouen. Itouen is the big, one of the biggest beverage company in Japan. This competition has been held since 18, 19, 18, 19, 1889 until now, once a year. And this competition's concept is making new haiku, which means break the traditional rules and writing haiku about people, about whatever people want to write. And there is a six sections, elementary school, junior high school, High school, General A, General B, is an English haiku. In addition, elementary school includes preschool students. General A includes college students to people who are, uh, people who are under 40 years, people, 40 years of age. And General B includes people who are over 40 years people to elderly people. And also, English haiku has no age and no, no nationalities. So if you are interested in haiku, you can apply for this haiku competition. <laughs> and if people win, if people win these competitions, the haiku will be on the will be on the beverage bottle on the beverage bottle as an advertisement. 
And if people got a prize such as Minister of Education Prize, Grand Prize, or Excellent, excellent Prize, people, will, people would, would get uh, some prize money. In conclusion, there is uh, three ways that haiku is, in, haiku is related to Japanese daily life. There are different feelings when seeing or writing haiku, shifting topics, and haiku competitions are supported by big businesses. In my opinion, haiku is spreading because there are more modern topics such as sweets. I think using, sweet, use, using sweets as a haiku topic is a good way to, good, way, good method to spread the popularity of people popularity of haiku to people who live these days. Thank you. In our conclusion, you learned that haiku is still changing the rules and styles. Also, many people write haiku as a journal. As Reika said, the literature may disappear from the society. However, haiku is still alive today. It is because haiku is our self-expression tool. So, haiku is the living and breathing of poetry. So, if you want to write haiku, please enjoy it. Don't forget, you can write Absolutely fabulous haiku. <laughs> In the end, we make our own haiku about the extension program. As the tree loses their leaves, we find our precious treasures. Thank you, extension. <laughs> For four months, we had a fabulous time at MFWI. We learned not only American culture, but also Japanese culture by making this presentation. We would like to say thank you for the, all the people who supported us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wonder about translating haiku from Japanese to English, mm -hmm. and particularly the number of syllables. I would guess that often 575 doesn't translate into that many syllables in English. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. The question is, is the counting, way of the counting syllables are different between Japanese haiku and American haiku? The answer is true. For example, the word rain, in Japanese, we count re, i, n, so we count as three syllables. However, in English, we count rain, just one syllable. So it's hard for American to actually write haiku in 17 syllables. So my recommendation, my recommendation is break the rules <laughs> <laughs> and half the middle line is longer than first and third and it looks like haiku. <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. Ma <laughs> So the question is, who, who judge the winner in, in, big, in the biggest competitions? Huh. <laughs> 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 that is a good question. <laughs> but 
it wasn't uh, it wasn't my part of research, so I'm sorry. I I have no idea. But in my guess, I think the company of mm. president president of company or the top high top class top class of company decide to decide the prize to the win who mm. win is yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, mom. If you were a judge in a haiku competition, <laughs> what would be your most important point to consider for it to be a good haiku or any haiku? The question is, if I, if we are the judge, 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 what kind of haiku will we choose? In my case, I want to choose a funny haiku. <laughs> and yes, funny haiku and the most, the haiku with most movement for me. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. The question is, what is, uh, what haiku was impressed for us? My, also my grandmother writes haiku, and when, when um, my, when she, uh, she wrote, she wrote haiku which are about us. In, when I was a child, I, I lived in America a little bit, because of my, my father's job, but my grandmother was afraid that my father went to the another country. So she wrote about us, haiku, us, and I was, I didn't know my, I didn't know my grandmother wrote haiku about us, so I was so impressed and I felt so happy. Yes. Does anyone have another other question? No. Beautiful job, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. On behalf of all of the extension students, I would like to thank you again for coming this evening. We hope that you